Hey guys, Uncommon Ramen here. Today we're going to take a look at Pocket Odyssey, a little game that I discovered, I want to say some time ago, uh, but I found it, found it very difficult to find a copy. Um, it was by KaijuCraft. Uh, I believe there, it was a Kickstarter, and um, I found it difficult to find a retail copy. I actually ended up finding this on eBay. Um, I don't know about the availability on KaijuCraft. In fact, I'm going to actually check that out right now. All right, so uh, KaijuCraft does not actually have their own website. Um, as far as I can tell, this is the only game that they've done. I could be wrong on that. Um, when I type in KaijuCraft, the only thing that comes up is Pocket Odyssey. Uh, you cannot find it on Amazon anymore. Um, you still can find it on eBay. I found a couple copies for about $29 on eBay. Um, you can find it at Noble Knights, game, um, Noble Knights Games website. Uh, for about $40, and there is a collector's edition of this game, which I believe was a Kickstarter exclusive that you can find for around $55 on eBay on bid, I believe, so it'll probably get a lot worse. Um, but Pocket Odyssey, to talk about Pocket Odyssey, uh, one of the biggest reasons I picked this up was because it was a pocket game. It's something that's very small that you can take with you. Um, it's not solo, so it's not something that you'll be able to play by yourself. But there was a reason I wanted to pick this up. So when I... Let's just take a look at uh, what's inside the box really quick so I can kind of show you what the components are. Um, let's start with these guys right here. Um, just... So some of this is power, some of this is, this shows you just creatures that are in the game. Um, so the game itself is uh, a, a, a take from D&D, except in a much smaller package and takes far less time. So then we have right here, we have power, or is it powers? Okay, we have creature, or we have players. Um, Trap Master, uh, Dragon Mage, and Ogre Slayer. So you can see those. There are more uh, characters. I, I recently played this. That's why those guys are separate. Uh, we have some powers here. Fireball, Polymorph, Illusion, Disciplined, and Hardy. Um, let's just keep digging into the box. But anyway, what it is, is a... Uh, game about making a story on the fly um but you're given prompts on how to make that story and you send your characters you you have a dm there's going to be a dm just like uh dungeons dragons um but the character setup stage takes infinitely less time than DD does um in the sense that you're going to choose your character you're going to choose a couple of powers um, based on how much, uh, how many extra actions you want for each of those those uh, powers. Because uh, you get a choice of up to three powers, um, but if you use uh, all three, if I remember correctly, you only get to use them once per encounter. Um, whereas if you just choose a single action, you can use it up to three times Per encounter and if you choose two actions you can choose one that you only use once per encounter and one that you use twice per encounter um, and then you will also get an item um, that will help you to kind of forge a backstory for your character and that's it once you've chosen your character your actions and your item that's pretty much it you're gonna then introduce yourself to the rest of the table as well as the dm um, explain to the DM why your item does what it does um, so that the DM can approve that or not. And then um, then you just move into playing the game um, where it's prompted at that point by the DM. So we're just going to, like, comes with some uh, D6 there, um, comes with a lot of these little tiny cards. These tiny cards represent um, some of the items that will be available to you, so like the Vampiric Mace... Uh, the Gob Axe, <clears throat> Slayer's Bow, Assassin's Blade, Health Potion, Hunter's Axe, Thunder Hammer,
Monster Shield. Staff of Missiles. Focus Circlet. Pillar Sword. Then we got some markers that go on the table. These markers just indicate where uh, uh, other monsters are for the DM. Um, we have personal goals. You'll receive a personal goal at the beginning of the game as well, and it's just something small that you want to do um, in order to get some, I believe, extra points uh, for the party. Just simple things like, okay, show mercy, fail a task, save a life, uh, play peacemaker, protect a party member, fall in love, uh, prove your worth, do something epic, risk your life, face your fear, develop a fear, uh, do something rash, things like that. You're also going to receive... Um... Oop, I have some mixed up goal cards here, let me... See if we can't look at those two. Uh, invest or instigate a fight, outsmart your enemy, play your flaw at a bad time, right? And then you're going to receive. So speaking of flaws, you're going to receive a flaw as well, because we're all we're all just mortal beings. We all have flaws. So some of us are obsessive compulsive, compulsive gambler, pyromaniac, um, gossip, loud, narcolepsy, butterfingers. Overconfident, compulsive liar, epic beard, short term memory loss, a prankster, a lactose intolerant, gullible, cold blooded, impatient, love struck, attention deficit, partially deaf, short temper. So you're going to have these. Uh, flaws as well. These flaws are going to develop, not really develop, but actually um, guide you on how you play the character. So if you're obsessive compulsive, obviously you're going to take some very obsessive compulsive um, um, actions during the game. Um, you're also, like I said, you're going to have your personal goal, which is basically something that you want to try to get done before the end of the campaign. Um, we're going to take a look at some of these other powers that are available. So we also had things like poison, dodge, quick shot, force wall. There are other characters as well. Um, these characters include a phantom blade, an elfin arch or elfin blood, a charmer, and a trickster. Then you're going to have a whole bunch of these cards, and I'm, I'm going to actually, I missed one, so let me just pull that guy out. These cards right here are story cards. These cards are going to help you create a, um, I guess, a, 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 a story on the fly. They're going to help prompt you to help you guide your story in a specific direction. So we have things like instigate a fight or scour the streets, infiltrate, uh, these are backward. Uh, man versus environment, uh, held prisoner. How are these so badly organized? <laughs> Here we go. Um, maze, random event, split the group, in love, death trap, worst fears, massive battle, chase, go before the crowd, riddle, bodyguards, stealth, competition. So these story cards, essentially what you're going to do is you're going to shuffle them all together and then you're going to draw three because you're going to create, what you're trying to do is create a three chapter story. Okay. And so you're going to draw the three cards and then you're going to try and figure out which one you want to be chapter one and then chapter two and then chapter three. And using the text here, um, you're going to try and figure out a way. They're double sided by the way. So you can see the f uh, full text all the way. Um, you're going you're gonna to use it to help guide the story. And the stories don't have to be long stories. Essentially, it's a quick way of putting together a D&D &D group without putting together a D&D &D group. Um, it gives you an opportunity to 
uh, play a D and D type game in a much shorter amount of time. I think you can get a game done in about an hour and a half, um, and that's assuming there's no interruptions and whatnot. Um, but basically, and it also just depends on how how much time it takes for the the storyteller to come up with a good story. But basically, you're going to take these prompts and you're going to order them the way you want to order them, and then you're going to come up with a story um, to connect them all together, and then you're going to have the players play through that story. So you're going to see all these tokens in here as well. Some of these tokens are gold tokens, some of these are uh, power tokens, stun tokens. Uh, we actually have uh, little loot tokens. You're going to receive one of these at the beginning of the game. Um, Instant elephant, uh, orc head, animated rope, um, you know, just things like that. There's a there's a bunch of little items in here, and then we have larger cards here. Some of these larger cards are going to be um, basically map sections. So they're double sided, and there's quite a few of them, and you can use these map sections pretty much any way you want to form whatever um, area that these players are going to be at, okay? And these players, they're, they, they're uh, in the form of meeples, so they're going to be occupying some space on here. Um, so you can kind of see that you're given a lot of... For, for such a small box, you're given a lot of content to help create a story, to help set a scene and to help um, guide that story along so that your players are engaged the whole time. I showed you earlier we had different monsters available, and those monsters, you can have any, oh, that was upside down, my bad. You can have any of those monsters, well, this is now upside down. Oh, they don't, they flip like this. Um... If I remember correctly, you can choose any of those monsters to occupy at any given time. Um, obviously, you want to try and tie it into the story somehow. But uh, And some of these actually connect with other versions of the cards. So, like, this is a four-story inn, and you can see that there are two other cards uh, that are available to it. Um, this right here is a gob hideout, and you can see that... It has four cards available to create it, and here's another part of the Gob Hideout. And this is part of the Four Story Inn. Uh, we have Harvest Woodland that has four cards, and then the Catacombs that also has four cards. So another part of the Harvest Woodlands, another part of the Catacombs. So you can basically create um, different maps depending on the uh, accuracy to your story. Um, and you should use these maps to try and figure out how you can guide a story anyway, so you can you can decide whether your team is in a sorcerer's den or whether they're in the woodlands, um, and so on and so forth. And it also helps you figure out kind of what kind of creatures they should be expecting to see. So if they're in an arena brawl, you know you could you could assume that you could see anything. But if we're in a um, forested area, maybe we're going to see, you know, some goblins or spiders or stuff like that, right? And there's just a bunch of stuff, like a bunch of map tiles like that. And then you have some player aids for the storyteller to kind of understand, you know, what these little terms mean. Um, you know, a list by level of different baddies that they can, they can have. Uh, quick rules reference. Um, it also gives you a card um, that helps you come up with names for your character. Male names, uh, female names. It's also going to show you uh, what a legendary hero looks like. So if you go into a campaign, because you can actually do a campaign in this, it's going to show you uh, how to set up a legendary hero. And it's just, like I said, that's that's basically what this game is it turned it's a it's a D, D in a box for about an hour and a half game um maybe you're like me and you don't want to sit through an entire D, D campaign because it takes a really long time uh D, D is heavily um dependent on the storyteller so if the storyteller isn't very good then the campaign isn't going to be that great either 
one of the other things about D&D that is really unfortunate is that um, if you have if you have bad players at the table, it can also ruin a campaign. Um, the the beauty of this is that it's a tiny box. So you can bring it with you uh, with a bunch of other games, uh, pretty much anywhere you want to go. And the other beauty of it is that if you know that the players you're playing with are just not going to be a good fit for this game, you don't have to pick this game. Um, but it's a good thing. It's a good way uh, in in a, a party situation if you know that the people that you're at the party with are all a bunch of D&D buffs uh, but you don't want to sit down and inter- interrupt the party for you know hours on end playing a D&D campaign you can pop this game out and for an hour and a half you've got entertainment um, that's just really it's it's a very interesting game and for me since I am not a big fan of d and I've tried playing it multiple times every time I've played it I've had a bad group or I've had a bad DM and it just wasn't um, it wasn't up my alley. Um, between that and the amount of time that a single campaign takes, it was it was very easy to get tired throughout the course of it. Not to mention that it's very easy for the character creation process to take absolutely an entire session, and that to me is extremely boring. Um, it's very di- it's very easy for people in uh, D and D to spend extreme amounts of time creating their characters uh, because they're too busy min maxing, and it's it just takes away from the fun of the game. Um, min maxing in general is another thing that I that I love about this game. You can't min max in this game. You're you're given things pretty much at random, and you just have to make it work. D and D min maxing takes away from the fun of the game. Uh, when somebody if you have you know, four people in a campaign and three of them just build their characters for the aesthetic fun of building their character. And then you have one person who spends the entire time min-maxing their character to bejesus and back. It kills the experience because you have the one person basically carrying the rest of the party because it, they've just created their character to be so extremely powerful from the from uh, exiting the gate, you know. It's just right off the bat extremely powerful. And that just, to me, takes away from the game. It also doesn't herald to the way that D&D feels um in a D&D campaign um you should be starting out at a novice level level one your character barely knows what he's doing doesn't understand what combat is fully um maybe is gonna fight some kobolds and some goblins and eventually level up to be a badass um and that's something that I really appreciated about a game like this is that you're not, I mean, you can go into a campaign setting and uh, level up and so on and so forth, but at the very beginning of this game, you are kind of just a newbie. And there isn't really any way to, uh, min, like I said, min max the character. Um, another cool thing about the game is that everything is very, very open ended in this game. So if you're. If you have a question, you can run it by your DM, and if you give a compelling argument behind the reasoning for what you want to do, um, there's no reason why your DM can't uh, accommodate said, said action. I think these are upside down. Yes, they are. So anyway, that is Pocket Odyssey. Um, If you have any comments um, or questions, uh, leave them in the comments below. Um, As I've been saying before, any negative comments are just going to get removed um, outright. Uh, There's no room for negativity. Uh, If you don't have anything nice to say, just don't say anything at all. It's pretty simple. Um, If you like the video, please like and subscribe. And consider backing me on Patreon. Um, I have a Patreon that I am still in the process of of making but it's it's to a point where I can I can probably um launch it um and anybody who feels inclined to support me um it really helps me get these this content out to everyone um and helps me focus specifically on this um so just consider if you like the videos um heading to that Patreon page and uh giving me some support and uh, I think that's it guys until next time peace